shocking revelation, a crossover between KSP1 and KSP2, massive noises, all of this and more coming right up. Hello everybody and welcome. This week offered a few exciting new things in regards to our favorite space game Kerbal Space Program and its sequel Kerbal Space Program 2. There was update 1.12.5 for KSP1 and there was a new feature episode video for KSP2. And one ties into the other. How you might ask? Well, if you are familiar with uh, the now 7 episodes that were released over the past couple of years, there was always a short something more segment at the end showing a KSP mission being flown. Some of them had hidden audio messages that were decoded into something similar to the Arecibo message. There's actually two now. The first showing the Kraken destroying a rocket coming from the Kerbal's home planet Kerbin. And the second is now complete after the latest episode depicting this. It very much looks like a Kerbal meeting some kind of alien. But maybe also a map how to get there to meet them. What's your take on this decoded image? Let me know in the comments below. As usual, it was not me that decoded it on my own. It was a bunch of people over on Reddit who are really quick in doing these type of things. While this is already quite neat, it's not the only reveal. The video shows us the end of the Something More saga. There was a lot of speculation in the community what it could be. A moon landing with a celebratory KSP2 flag, a new scientific discovery, something else. Well, instead of all of this, the lander crashes into the moon arches, or one of the moon arches, which, come to think of it, is very much on brand for Kerbals. So I can't really blame them for doing it like this. However, Right as the vehicle explodes, a person moves in front of the camera and the video cuts out conspicuously. So we don't see the debris or any of the aftermath. Which is where the new KSP1 update 1.12.5 comes into play. Because in its changelog there is only one entry. Added something to MUN. Right, so of course it's time to investigate. Therefore I whipped up this little spaceship here. It's a simple lander return vehicle with a transfer and descent stage in the back and then I made a probe to scan for anomalies. Right here and there I wished I could already use a feature that will be in KSP2, the ability to build multiple sub-assemblies in the same workspace. Here in old KSP I had to build the probe as a new vehicle, save it as a sub-assembly, open the new vehicle and add the probe as a sub-assembly on top. Yeah, I could have built it from bottom up, but then I would not have seen the delta V numbers and made sure that it has enough range or enough uh, capacity to do what I wanted to do. Things like this will be a lot easier in KSP2, judging from what we have learned from the developers over the past few months. Anyhow, after I was done, it was off to the MUN. This is pretty standard stuff, so I won't get into much detail here. The ascent and transfer was uneventful and worked as planned. Once at the MUN, I put the vehicle stack into an elliptical orbit and deployed the probe at its highest point, roughly 300 kilometers above the surface, and then circularized the probe. The lander element was put in a low orbit to make landing easier later on. If you have watched my little How to Find Anomalies shorts video, link in the description or up top, you know what happens now. I used the probe course curbnet access feature to scan the surface of the MUN for anomalies. And here they all are, ready for being explored. I put waypoints on each and then it was time to check them out. Luckily for me, I already had an old lander at one of the arches, so I loaded that. And yeah, no damage and no debris there, looked just like it did in the past. And my platform that I had attached in previous mission was still there as well. If you want to view that, how I mounted that on there, I'll link the video where I built it in the description and also via the icon on the top right. Alright, so time to check out the next anomaly. So we have to adjust our plane a bit and then reduce our velocity when above the target. 
And already on the scent we can see that there's something different with this Moon Arch. Yep, they have changed it. Some awkward maneuvering later I was able to get a closer look. Here we have our brave pilot use her jetpack to get on top of the arch. And it's... well, it's something alright. It is a bit reminiscent of the Stargate from the movie and TV series of the same name. And the revealed elements are where the lander from the something more element crashed into the arch. So thanks to that brave Kerbal that sacrificed itself and its vehicle, we now know what's under the moon arches. Or do we? Because what exactly is it? The answer is very likely a map. The big light in the center of the arch is the sun. You can see a big and small purple thing and a big and small orange yellowish thing. And if you get really close and I mean like this, you can see a big green blob hidden among the rubble with smaller greener dots all around it. All of those would match Eve, Duna and Jewel, three of the planets in ksp one solar system. But where are the other planets? If you look at the arch a bit closer, you can see circular lines, at least hints of such lines between the lights. These are probably the orbits of Moho, Kerbin and Drez, which might be hidden on the left side of the arch, still under all those rocks. Here's where the speculation and a potential new backstory for KSP2 come in. In future video episode 3, there was a short animation that hinted at a maybe a new planet for the Kerbal's home system. Some people are now speculating that this mysterious 8th planet could be hiding under this arch. If we think about KSP2, one of the main upcoming features will be interstellar travel. Unfortunately, it will not be in the early access version that will be released February 24th yet, but will come in a later update. So maybe, just maybe, if you go around exploring your home system, you will discover more hints about alien civilizations, and that will be what triggers Kerbals to begin interstellar exploration. Because sure, exploring for the sake of exploring is nice and all, but having a goal like discovering what all those monoliths are around the Kerbal system and the newly discovered Monarch map and the structures on Val are all about will probably be a good way of exciting players for getting out there, like far out there into interstellar space. Me personally, I can't wait to do so, so I hope the interstellar content will come sooner rather than later. But of course, as always, I want the developers to take their time to make it right. I mean, we've waited a long time, we can wait a little bit more, right? What do you think? Anyway, so far we have been talking about just a small thing from the latest feature episode, basically just the easter egg. Let's look at what the video is actually about. Recording Rockets KSP2's audio director Howard Mostrom was given access to United Launch Alliance's facilities. Not only was he allowed to record actual VAB sounds from ULA's actual VAB, he had multiple microphones set around the launch pad and was able to capture the sounds of an Atlas V blasting off into space. This culminates in a short gameplay clip which has two watermarks on it that put a huge smile on my face. First beta gameplay, so we are now out of the pre-alpha we have seen so far, and more importantly, at least for me, in-game audio. We will hear actual rocket engine noises when launching now rockets in KSP2. It's pretty sweet. I couldn't agree more. Can I just say how great it was to see Howard's passion for his job? The guy had a smile on his face almost constantly. His enthusiasm was infectious, at least for me. Which once again confirms to me that KSP's development is in the right hands. Well, we will see if that's really true at the end of February. But sound design is a massive part of feeling immersed into a video game and having real world sounds will go a long way in achieving that. Also, big shout out to ULA for making this happen. I know the focus in media and also with space YouTubers is a lot on SpaceX these days. 
But it seems ULA is always there to cater to the next generation of space enthusiasts. See also the fantastic Rocket Factory tour and Launchpad video that Smarter Every Day did with them. I'll link them in the description as well. So that's about it for this week's news surrounding Kerbal Space Program and Kerbal Space Program 2. What are your takes on the new reveals? Do you think we will meet aliens in KSP2? Will more parts of the MUN be revealed in upcoming updates until February 24th when KSP2 will go into early access? Did I miss something that you or somebody else discovered? Let me know in the comments or over on my Discord server. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.